Hey everyone, Pupsker here. So in today's video, I want to go over the best Aya farming right now in Warframe, but without the Ghoul Purge event, as that event got farmed so fast because of the event of, you know, Prime Resurgence event, people farmed it so fast, got all the Aya, and now it's gone already. And because I believe some consoles didn't even have the Ghoul Purge event up at the time of Prime Resurgence, so hey, let's talk about the best way to farm Aya in Warframe. It's always important to remember you can get Aya in Void Missions and in Bounty, so keep that in mind. Void Missions are not the best way to farm Aya overall, as they just, in general, have a low Aya drop rate, so not the Void, okay? The best way to farm Aya overall is still actually open world bounties and that will be specifically the level 40 to 60 open world bounties. But the three separate open world bounties do actually have separate drop rates, so some are better to run than others, and some are just overall faster to run than others, so I would generally recommend certain ones over the others. So let's talk about that. First and foremost, let's take a look at the Cetus Bounties. As you can see for the Cetus Bounties, Stage 1, zero Aya drop, right? But Stage 2 and 3 actually have a decent Aya drop chance of 33%. So if you do have to run Cetus, good enough chance you might actually end up getting an Aya. So Cetus isn't too bad. And then you look at Stage 4 of 5, and you do have a 25% drop chance on Aya. So again, it is actually lowered in that case, but it's still not really too bad. The final stage of Cetus Bounties, though, has a 38% Aya drop chance. Overall, Cetus Bounties are good to get Aya, but I wouldn't say they're really the best Aya drop chance. Especially if you get some of the slower Cetus bounties. Cetus is one of the larger open worlds, so in general, it just takes a little bit more time to travel. So if you don't have an Arcwing, you definitely probably don't want to run these missions for Aya. All in all though, it's not bad, right? Don't get me wrong. If you need to get some of the open world standing on Cetus, Great idea to run Cetus bounties. You'll get some Aya, you'll get some standing, you'll get a large variety just of random loot, right? So that's why, honestly, for the Prime Resurgence event, I would recommend just doing bounties and trying to farm out whatever random open world items you need from the bounties and just standing overall, right? But Cetus doesn't actually have the best drop chance out of all three of the open worlds, no. I would say it actually has like one of the worst ones, but still overall pretty good, okay? The next one I'll go over is the Orb Vallis drop chance. So Orb Vallis actually has, I would say, one of the better drop chances, but at the same time, it's kind of similar to Cetus, right? As you can see, stage one of the Orb Vallis bounty, you know, no Aya, but you'll get familial debt bonds, so I know a lot of people always need those, so again, it's good to farm up. Stage two and three, though, does have a 25% drop chance of Aya, so there's a decent enough chance that by stage four, you will have an Aya, like a 50-50 chance overall, a little bit less, but you know how it is, right? And then you get to stage four, sadly, Aya drop chance is reduced to about 21% chance, but that's still not like terrible overall, but it's not insanely high. The nice thing about Orb Valance though, is you get to the final stage and the Aya has a 50% drop chance, which is really nice because you get the bonus on Orb Valis, you get double Aya for the final stage. It's a huge boost overall, so I would say Orb Valis pretty good to get most of the Aya as well. Again though, I would run Orb Valis if you need more open world Orb Valis standing, maybe some of the familial debt bonds or random items that the bounties drop, right? The nice thing is, no matter like which rotation of the level 40 to 60 bounties there are, the Aya drop chance between the open world should always remain the same, so Orb Valis will stick to that like 
25% chance stage 2, 3, and then 21% chance stage 4, and then it's a 50-50 for the final stage, whether you get Aya and, you know, bonus Aya or not, so that's why Orb Malice is actually pretty good, okay? It's a great chance to, to get other open world leveling done, but I'll talk about that more so near the end. So the final place we have, of course, is the Cambian Drift Deimos Bounties, right? The first stage has overall good drops of Kuva, Endo, or an Ayatin Star, right? Amber Ayatin Star, I should say. So the first stage rotation of the Drift is not bad, but you get to stage two and three, and the Aya drop chance is 28.5% chance. So, again, decent chance you might end up getting an Aya stage two or stage three. It's not like insanely high, don't get me wrong, but you always have that decent enough chance to get it. And then you move on to stage four, and the Aya drop chance drops to about 22% chance. So, it could be worse, but it could be better, right? 22% drop chance overall for Aya. It's a decent enough gamble, but not a really high chance you're gonna get it in one go. But hey, eventually you'll get a good amount of Aya. Again, the nice thing about the final stage of the Cambian Drift is that the Aya has a 43% drop chance, so near a 50-50. But it also has the issue of having the 50% drop chance pretty much on the other hand, for the Quasis and the Zaku chassis blueprint, right? The Aya and the Quasis blueprint, however you say it, both have a 43% drop chance. And then the Zaku chassis blueprints kind of puts that in favor of not getting Aya. So it's kind of a pain on the Cambian Drift. But the nice thing about the Cambian Drift bounties is you can get it done. And it is personally my favorite open world bounty to run because you can get it done again in a decent amount of time I clock in at like 12 minute runs 11 minute runs depending on exactly how fast it goes But usually about 12 minutes and I average about Two to four Aya each time well I'd average probably two to three if I get the double Aya on the final stage Yeah, it'll be anywhere from two to four if not yeah, it could be anywhere from 1 to 2 usually, so it's not insanely good, especially comparing all of these to the Ghoul Purge speed farming, but it's still a very good opportunity to do a lot of things. You will get a lot of open world standing, so if you've ever needed to farm up your open world stuff, now is the time. Especially with the new war coming soon enough, it's probably a good idea to get your amps leveled up. I'll make a video about what you should get leveled for the new war, but yeah, it's just do all of the open worlds is a good idea. It's clear DE is pushing us towards getting our open world progress done, especially in preparation for the new war. So I mean, you should you should get it done, right? There's a lot of open world stuff that we should get done, like also leveling your Necromech, right? If you have it, because this is a good opportunity to throw some Forma on your mech if you need to max it out, level it up, or just if you're like me, throw an extra couple Forma on it so that you can max out a couple more mods, right? There's a lot of things you can do in the open worlds. You can even level right your Warframes weapons, collect different Warframes on the bounties. And if you need to collect like lower level bounty items, run those if you need to, right? There's a lower chance you'll get Aya if you run the lower level bounties. But if you need to collect open world items on those bounties, Honestly, you might as well run it, okay? The open worlds have a ton of random stuff to collect, so maybe Aya shouldn't be your first priority every time if you still have a lot of random things to farm up. If you're more like me and you're done most of the open world bounty farming, right? Just run the level 40 to 60s. I am in favor of running first Deimos, then Orb Vallis, and then Cetus in, like, uh, order of best to worst open worlds, but honestly they all have good enough Aya drop chances and they share them well in the stage like two three uh, Bounties so honestly not a bad farm no matter which one you end up doing so that 
is the best farm for Aya without the Ghoul Purge event. I hope you do appreciate it, just because I know a lot of people were asking me on stream, on Sunday, on YouTube, and on Twitch, just, you know, what the fastest farm is now for Aya since Ghoul Purge left. And that's it. High level bounties are just too good for Aya. It's very much looking like it's on purpose that DE made it such a good drop chance. Again, you can always still farm it in the void, but... I mean, if you're only farming for Aya, go to high level bounties. That's it for this video, everyone. I hope you appreciate it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you were to like the video, check out and follow any of my social medias. Subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube so, you know, you know whenever I'm streaming. So, well, upload a video or streaming. So, thank you all, and I will see you next time. Peace.